Okay, well, welcome to uh, Dartmoor. It's around about half past seven at night <laughs> or in the evening. As you can see, it's pitch black. Lockdown, unfortunately, has happened and it's uh, tomorrow night. So this is kind of like a splash and dash <laughs> type of Formula One uh, scenario of this is my only chance of a camp uh, you know, before lockdown tomorrow night. And unfortunately, I have to get home early in the morning, around about uh, eight o'clock, I'll have to leave here and get back around about uh, 11. So if I leave here at eight, I'll get to car about nine, home around about 11, and Dina's got a dental appointment at, uh, at 12. Shame the dental appointment's not late. If it was, I could hang around here in the morning a bit longer, but it is what it is. Okay, I've taken a tiny bit of a gamble, but given that I have to go early in the morning anyway, I didn't think it was uh, too much of a gamble. And I don't think it's going to be too freezing. And I've got a few things to mitigate. <laughs> the famous mitigation. Okay, so what we've got, let's get so you can see. we have brought the bivvy. Now, Lassie has found the water. We're back in our uh, usual spot. It was pretty, pretty easy to find, well, very easy to find. I just uh, took a slight wrong turning and came in uh, a different, uh, kind of a different uh, <laughs> way that I would have done, but uh, I got here easily enough. So, last time, if you remember, the center pole kept moving to the left and right well I've, I've pitched it this time with two lines holding it up so it shouldn't slip to each side and i just have to hope it doesn't snap or anything under any tension so i just have to be a little bit cautious of that now i have brought the poncho so i am going to set the poncho up as a lean to over my head. Just be a bit careful walking around here. At the moment, the breeze is a uh, west southwesterly, which is kind of coming in. <laughs> Not so easy to show things in the dark. So at the moment, it's kind of coming in in this direction, directly towards us. So. On paper, I'm, I've pitched the wrong way, but it, the wind is supposed to change direction during the night to a, a northerly uh, breeze, which is why I've kind of sort of pitched it that way in, in the hope that it is, a, you know, that it is northerly. So before my hands get much colder, I'm going to get the poncho up and kind of just see how it goes, you know, over this, whether it will actually work, um, you know, like that. I'm not quite sure. So we will, <laughs> that's the next thing to find out. Testing. Okay, well, the time is now eight o'clock. Let me step back here. So that's the basic setup that I've done. Let me take the torch off and shine it. So that's the basic setup that I've uh, done here. So I've tried to do it that the pole inside, Lassie, let's, <laughs> let's get some Lassie footage. <laughs> I've tried to do it so that the pole, so that my pole there isn't touching and I've just about succeeded. I had to move one of these lines here a fraction just to uh, to do that and I've pitched it it is quite high so it could <laughs> it could get quite drafty Lassie shh. so it certainly could get drafty but then you know it is a bivvy setup you know it's not a a tarp setup as such you know the tarp is there really just to give some shelter from the wind but more 
just a little protection of any rain, mainly in the head area, um, so that you know I can eat and and drink and watch a, you know watch a film. So I've kind of deliberately, you know, pitched it high. It's it's much higher than last time. If you look at my last video, the corner points. I actually pitched, you know, directly to the ground, whereas here they're they're raised up, you know, quite significantly. I put one line on this point here just to secure that down. I could actually do with bringing more a line. I do have a spare piece there, that, that small yellow piece, and then I do have that orange uh, there. And if I absolutely had to use it, then I, I would. And I'd probably be tempted to use it on this point here. But it shouldn't really be needed. I must have been feeling a bit less. A bit lazy, and I've also run out of uh, those clip things as well. Although again, if I absolutely had to, I could take either clips off here, or I've even put clips on the on the other end up there, which you know, really is, I'm very sure, not necessary. Although I have uh, done it. Uh, so they're kind of like spare clips if I needed them and I felt it was really necessary to put a clip on this side. But I've got that bit of grass there to protect me. So I'll, I'll leave this. I'm not really going to get it any lower or any more secure. So I, I'm, happy with, I'm happy with that set up. And quite literally in 12 hours time, 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, I need to be leaving as well. So it's not a permanent <laughs> fixture. There's plenty of room under there, you know, for Lassie to go. And I know some of you say, oh, poor dog, etc, etc, etc. You know, <laughs> she's a Border Collie, she's got a double coat, and I've not yet, ever, even seeing a shiver out here so I really don't think uh, we've got a problem with Lassie. I've got a bed and a mat for her. I now need to get everything out of the pack and into the bivvy so you know oh, I will need to get water as well so I mean if per chance and there isn't any rain forecast or very little but now if per chance it rained I've mitigated <laughs> um, any chance of really getting particularly wet unless the rain does uh, comes from the south because I could get everything under this section under here and pretty much do most things I think I hope under the tarp with some degree of you know protection from the elements again if I'm not far enough back then I could or that would be a bit annoying but I could in theory loosen one two three pegs off fairly easily and just move the tarp forward and that would then give more you know more head coverage so you know again there are things that you can do just to give your head protection so I should be able to do the bivvy up with just the mesh open now, I don't know whether I'm going to be warm enough first of all I've brought three pieces of foam one piece here which I can kneel on one piece for Lassie, which I'll put down in a minute, and one piece which I've put under the bivvy. 
Now, we're going to open up the bivvy. And I probably straight away need to just put my foam, so my foam takes up most of the space underneath. Because I'm using the MLD quilt, which is rated to 28 or minus two. And I'm a freezing cold sleeper, so I don't know how that's going to work out. So I've got warmer gloves in there. I've got waterproof trousers there. And with this system, look, you know, again, I'm not quite sure how much you can see. You know, I can sit up, you know, quite a lot. <laughs> now, admittedly, if it was raining, my back would be getting wet and I'd have to try and duck under it a little bit more. So it's uh, not perfect, but it's, uh, it's not bad. Now in there is my down jacket, which I probably will need. That's my electronic bag of goodies, which I just put there. I brought the weather station with me, which I just put there. That's my emergency repair kit and things like that. Lassie, go back. Go back, Lassie. So I don't need that handy. That's a towel. Lassie, round here. Thank you, Lassie. <laughs> round that way. Oh, over there. Over that way. That's it, stay there. That's it, stay there. Chill. <laughs> All right, that's my tea. That's the most important thing in the whole thing. Are we actually recording? I don't remember hitting record. All right, that's my, that's tea, that's a pasta. More bungee cord there. I'll put that over there. Toothpaste. Okay, fuel can go there. Oh, let's see, move your bottom. <laughs> over there. That's it, stay there. <laughs> right, there's food. Now, I brought a whole load of food with me, which clearly I'm not going to need all of uh, that. I think Lassie might have splashed on the camera, I'm not sure. That's my cut. It's another part of the kestrel. In fact, that's, that's all of it there. That's my cooking pot, can go there. Now, one other thing that I did bring, just in case, and it's more of an emergency than anything else, is down booties and down leggings, because as I said, this bag only goes this quilt only goes down to uh, that's rubbish. The quilt only goes down to uh, minus two. And I'm a freezing cold sleeper. So if it gets anywhere near four or five, I'm probably going to get cold. And that 
is it. So there's water in there. Water in there. And the rucksack, I'm gonna put there. And then kind of act as a bit of a wind break, not much. <laughs> not much of a wind break, I don't think. I don't think it's gonna stay there, but every little bit uh, counts, as they say. I can always jiggle that a bit. Now, this time, I brought the Thermarest self-inflating mat. Most of my kit is quite old now. I spend my money on, well, apart from obviously the, you know, the, the bivvy and, you know, <laughs> the bivvy and the, the uh, poncho, of course. But most of my stuff I've had for a while now. So that's my old self-inflating mat. In here, I've got my... So I've got lots and lots of warm clothing in here. I've got a buff from my neck and a fleece. In here, I've got my down jacket. And as I say, in here, I've got my down boots and down leggings. Now, hopefully I won't need them, but given I don't know, you know, what the temperature's gonna do, and my legs are sticking out <laughs> there, I didn't think it was worth taking a chance. Hopefully that's a little bit cleaner. I think that's his bottom that's uh, <laughs> done a number there. Okay. Oh, so we'll set the weather station up. I hope. I have a rather... unique place to put this weather station. <laughs> I have a rather unique place to put my <laughs> put my six inch pole. Oh that goes in. <laughs> Haven't used it for a while. <laughs> that too. <laughs> right. Okay. I'm gonna show you where I'm gonna put my weather station. So we just okay well <laughs> one weather station <laughs> one weather station part of the setup now you can see what i was saying about the wind at the moment it's actually blowing this way so on the face of it i've done everything wrong by pitching it with you know with the wind blowing this way but the forecast does say that in the morning and during the night it's going to change to uh an easterly which that panel there covers and then a north easterly or a northwesterly sorry that's west over there. The forecast does say that it's going to change to a westerly direction, which is this panel here covering me. And then north, of course, which is the back. And then the east, which is this side here. So it is actually going to change a lot of direction during the night. So I'm kind of hoping that we're covered. But again, we're in a bivvy. So theoretically it doesn't matter and I will turn this on but of course by putting it here 
I don't actually have to move to turn it on. So, you know, during the night or the morning, I might be able to, you know, just turn it on and see what the weather is, uh, is doing. I do hear a lot of splashing that uh, you may not be able to see less either. Right, now let's zoom in. That. <laughs> That's not bad actually, because that's an ISO of 32,000, which I've been using. It's a 50th of a second flashing F4, indicating underexposure. And now it's not flashing F4. So it's obviously indicating that that's a, a pretty decent and you can see that Lassie is, uh, try and be careful where I'm standing. Lassie has found quite a uh, little patch there. Okay, it's starting to get quite, uh, chilly so and there's the setup <laughs> there I hope this uh, I hope this video gets a lot of a lot of views <laughs> coming out here uh, freezing my ass off for you a lot <laughs> All right, let's uh, get it into bed in a minute. Get this unpacked. We'll get that unpacked and then we'll see you maybe inside the tarp. Right, well, I think you can see me there. Now, I'm kind of relying on secondhand light from the torch down here and a bit of feel. Right, that's my balaclava. Okay, now, okay, if we're doing nighttime video, I could almost do with a second torch. In fact, I did bring a second torch and I'm just uh, too lazy to, <laughs> too lazy to get it. It's actually in Lass's uh, pack. So I'm gonna take my hat off that I've been wearing. The rain is, uh, started. I'm going to put my fleece on, which has a, a hood. I brought my hooded fleece this time. Now, I put the kestrel, I put the kestrel on and the uh, sound thing just came off. Hopefully, you can still hear me. I'll clip it back on properly in a minute. But the beauty of this is, look, I mean, I can, I can sit up, <laughs> you know, completely. And I've got quite reasonable headroom uh, here as well. Okay, so that's my fleece on. Let's put the sound thing there. Right, so hopefully I think you can hear me okay. All right, so now then my feet are a little bit cool. Now that's my, okay, so that's my booties. That's one booty. And that's the other booty. <laughs> so 
So, as a mitigation against getting cold feet, that's one, that's going to be the other one. As I mentioned, I've got also got uh, down trousers as well. So, if per chance my legs get cold or I start to get extra cold or anything like that, then I have um, down, you know, trousers as well. We'd be curious as to uh, what people do when they're filming of how they light so that the camera can see, but also that, <laughs> that they can see. I seem to have picked up this funny laugh. Anyway. That, I have to say, is quite comfy. Right, just going to grab the torch a minute. I wouldn't mind trying to find my wind shirt. There it is. back down there hopefully you can see me again the time is uh, time is ticking on a bit actually it's uh, it's about five past nine I couldn't leave home until four uh, normally I would have liked to have got here earlier and had more time here but the, the assessing team caring team whatever they called came out to uh, check on a mum which as one or two of you may know she's got dementia unfortunately it's uh, thankfully kind of thankfully if thankful is the right word to use um, early early so she's still reasonably with it although she wants to uh she wants to adopt more cats as if she didn't have enough cats of her own and she wants to take up <laughs> bless her she wants to take up teaching again because she used to be a teacher a long time ago the biggest problem with her is that she's not really looking after herself properly if you kind of get my just and she's so independent she won't let the carers clean her and wash her which is a bit uh, awkward okay well I think we are to a degree finally organized well not exactly organized but uh, but partly, partly organised for, for the night. It's just gone nine o'clock, which is it's a shame. It's so late. Okay, let's see whether it will hook up with the Kestrel. Oh, there we are at last. Okay, so I can tell you, because I know you're very interested in all this type of stuff, the temperature is 3.7 degrees centigrade. The wind direction is 318 degrees. Be odd if you got your temperatures and your, your uh, directions mixed up, wouldn't you? If it was uh, 316 degrees centigrade or something like that. Might be, I suppose it might be on some planet somewhere. And the wind speed is 2.6 meters per second now is there some way of uh changing so i need to change this meters per second business anyway well uh one thing i 
didn't bring was my glasses, which was a bit silly. Not so easy to uh, read this. Okay, well, the barometric pressure is 982 millibars. The wind speed is three meters per second. So like I said, I've got to figure out how to change that to miles per hour. The altitude, it may not be accurate. The altitude it's showing. Uh, the humidity is 89%. The temperature 3.8. The wind chill, which is the interesting one for us. Uh, the, uh, well, actually it did say minus 0 0.8, but now it's showing a uh, 0.1 so the temperature at the moment is uh, 3.8 and the wind chill around about zero so probably about time I uh, had something to eat okay well I think that's enough uh, information for at the moment okay I'm gonna crack on and do something in camp. I think I need a tea. I've been here since uh, seven o'clock, quarter past seven. So I've been here about two hours. It's taken me two hours to finally settle down. But that was the, you know, I've done a lot of filming. Well, uh, good morning, everybody. It's 10 to eight and I need to get going in a minute. So this is going to be a bit of a uh, I've put the kettle on. I won't have porridge. I'm not going to have time. It's going to be a bit of a mad dash to uh, <laughs> to get going. I need to be home at 12 o'clock or before 12. And it's 8 o'clock. So uh, theoretically there's time. But uh, I need to be home before 12. So I'm going to have to get going. Anyway, I've got the kestrel going so you can see a kestrel there literally at the end of the <laughs> bed you can see dew it didn't rain that's just dew there uh, slept well I did get cool I woke up maybe about Three, four, five o'clock, quite, quite cool. Not free, if not frozen. I was sort of cool. Um, shivered a, a little bit, uh, but never so cold. I was so tired. I just couldn't be bothered to put my uh, um, what do we call it on? <laughs> it's not very. Um, not very descriptive, is it? You know, warm jacket on. So I never, I never put the warm jacket on. Jeez, I got here so late last night. I basically last night just had soup and soup and. Um, something <laughs> oh god I'm, I'm a dinner and and some biscuit things and that was it and this morning i'm just gonna eat a biscuit and i'm gonna like i said unfortunately i have to run back and pack up as quickly as i can it's not my idea of a fun way of ending a trip at all, but uh, you know, so afraid and nervous, she won't go to the dentist by herself. So I gotta, I gotta virtually take her that. Anyway, life is what it is. So yeah. I meant to have woken up at seven, not eight o'clock. This is literally when I was thinking about walking back now. So it's gonna be a bit of a, a mad rush now. 
I don't even know how I'm going to be able to do it, but uh, somehow we will manage it, I'm sure. So, of course, I didn't put my rubbish away last night, so I thought I could, <laughs> I thought I could do it this morning in uh, a moment's peace. But yeah, everything worked very well. Um, like I said, I was I was on the cooler side, but not, you know, I wasn't uh, I wasn't frozen or anything um, or anything like that. Um, it was definitely cool, but uh, I did, one thing I did do, because I was, I did get cool at one point, as I say, I did get quite, quite shivery, and I couldn't be bothered to get out of bed, or I couldn't be bothered to put my, um, oh, I'm too tired, the brain's not working. I couldn't be bothered to put my jacket on because I didn't really want to get out of bed as such. So I put the MLD balaclava on. And that, between that and, and the booties that I was wearing in bed, obviously, surprisingly, you know, by keeping the feet super toasty warm, and my feet were toasty warm, and and my body toasty warm, or my body, my head, that must have kind of kept everything else <laughs> very warm, or helped to keep everything else from uh, cooling off too much. So, maybe a good little tip there, is if you, you know, start to feel cold, make sure that your feet and your head are super warm. Okay, I'm gonna have to move freaking quickly here. It was about um, seven o'clock oh well, no it was about half well, it was about six o'clock and I was awake at about six but quite cool and then I got myself cozy cozy back down again and then like I said the next thing I knew I woke up the sun was out and as soon as I knew the sun was out I thought oh no I think food what I'm gonna do is I'm not even gonna eat now I really don't have time I'm just going to put in the side of the pack so I can uh, oh, get going. Oh, it's nice tea. The tea tastes a little bit of. Um, Last night's dinner, <laughs> I never really bother. I never really bother um, cleaning my uh, bowl out. I've never been a great washer upper when I'm out here. I kind of just put up with it as it is. I so said, if it hadn't been for this rather ridiculous lockdown business. I would have come out a, a little bit later. Well, I never took anything out of my battery packs, so I better keep that near the surface just in case, but hopefully I've... Uh, got enough battery power to I'm not going to need waterproof trousers that's for sure because it looks quite sunny there normally in the morning when I wake up I put a film on or a bit of a 
something on the tablet when I'm uh, going. <laughs> Quite clearly, that's uh... oh, damn. I could actually have done with weight waking. I should have set the alarm. I was tempted to set the alarm for seven, and I thought oh, I'll probably wake up anyway. Um, and of course I didn't. So it's partly my fault. Okay. Right. Well, waterproof socks. That hat. Nighttime hat, which I didn't wear because I, I had the hood on here. Towel, which I didn't need, and buff. They can all go in the bag that the quilt will go into. The problem will be, once I'm out of here, I'm gonna have one more tea. Um, it's quite cool. My hands are gonna suddenly get quite chilly. The next thing I'm going to do, I think from here, is deflate this air bed. And that's uh, another good um, reason to keep, you know, a foam mat with you. Because when I deflate this air bed, Theoretically, I'd be straight on the ground, which would be, you know, incredibly cold. But like I said, I always keep the airbed. Sorry, I always keep a, a foam mat um, with me, which I put under the airbed. So I've always got that to help keep me warm as well. This was always going to be a bit of a rush trip. I hadn't uh, quite thought it would be quite as rushed as this, unfortunately. Um, okay, the, the quilt is damp on the surface but uh, but not uh, too bad I'm gonna start if I start to get cold I just start to get cold I haven't got time to uh, <laughs> mess around here it's already gone eight I quite literally need to be gone now Like I say, the only downside, one of the downsides, I should say, is it's not so easy to stuff a synthetic Quilt or bag away. Once you've got it tamed inside the bag, then you can give it a, a bit of a good old oh, squeeze. Now, thankfully, ooh. Trousers on. Oh, it's so easy when you're half asleep. That's got my trousers on, and now that's my socks on. Luckily, again, because it was just a short trip, I I wore, and I would never normally wear these. I wore these, which are waterproof trail shoes. And normally I wouldn't wear trail shoes 
out here because you're going to bog they're going to flood very very quickly but I knew this walk here so well that I knew the chances of actually going that deep into a bog was pretty remote um, to be honest this is going to be my last tea because I'm going to have to put this away pretty darn quickly as well it's ten past eight and like my emergency time for leaving camp was like 8.30 and that would get, get me to the car at about 9.30 just before and then home at 11.30 that's kind of like my and that's with no traffic. So I'm still just about within time, but then I haven't packed anything else away. Oh, damn it. Oh. Sometimes we do things to make our lives very complicated. <laughs> We'd be better marrying less I think. Right. Okay. Now then, where should I put the rucksack? Okay, let's get this. And I keep some some things I keep. <laughs> I keep quiet because some people don't have a sense of humor quite like mine either. Right. Okay. Right. So my tea is made. I'm not the cleanest of people when I'm out and about by any stretch of the imagination, but I don't like hairs in my teeth. Okay, let's just quickly show you here. So you can see there's obviously some, which is what it's going to do, obviously, condensation on the outside and you know, dry. It looks pretty dry. A few drops of condensation inside, but I must admit it's done a pretty good. It's done a pretty good job there, to be honest. It's not. Uh, there's not that much condensation out there. Let me see if I can get the. Castro um, uh, Okay, so the, the wind now is uh, oh, I, I worked out that meters per second because I've got it on um, uh, Metric that's why it's doing meters per second if I go to Imperial But it changes everything to Imperial so centigrade to Fahrenheit It doesn't look like you can do individual things because I was born in the 70s some things I like in meters and, and kilometers or whatever and I don't really like kilometers uh, apart from when I'm walking and other things is in you know miles and that type of thing so I like miles per hour for speed uh, but for temperature I like Celsius so the temperature is 5.5 centigrade and the wind speed is two meters per second which I think you double uh, but I could be wrong so it's about six miles an hour but it is easy to change. You just go over to, um, you go over to home at preferences, change it to imperial, and then back in again. And then you've got uh, eight miles per hour. That's not quite double, is it? But uh, wouldn't fire off, I suppose. Oh, and then it's down to five miles per hour, forty-nine Fahrenheit. So at preferences, back to metric. So it is quick to change it. 5.5 degrees 
And the current reading, um, altitude is minus two now. <laughs> uh, temperature 5.5, the wind chill three degrees, wind chill three degrees. Wind direction 351. So 351, that's almost 360, so that's almost north, isn't it? <laughs> almost. It's quarter past eight. Yeah. I'm gonna have to get a bit of a run on. Okay, I'm gonna deflate this mat. E. Actually, and do that some more. I must say, in here, under here, under cover, as it were. It's, uh, it's not too bad. I need to be careful with my tea. The last thing I'm going to do is to knock that over after I've uh, made it. Like I said, the only disadvantage to a frameless pack is that for me I use my bed the air bed as a back system so when I got a framed pack sometimes the last thing or not the last thing but sometimes one thing that I put in at the last minute is the bed, because then I can sort of sit on it. Um, but of course, because with a frameless pack, I use the bed as the frame. It needs to go in at the beginning. So that's the air bed folded down. So we put that in to the pack. I'm just going to get all of these bits here. You see me pack a bag. I, I do apologise that this is such a rush. I didn't want it like this. I'm, too so I'm sorry. I'm going to put all these bits in the pack and then I'll uh, get back to you. Okay, well, <clears throat> I've packed everything up here. And I'm ready to head back and I'm going to... I can't see the time now. And it's 10 to 9, which means I have to get back quickly. I'm going to go pretty much straight back that way rather than around straight that way. It's about 45 minutes, so I should still get back just after 9.30. And then home, hopefully, just after half past 11, which will just about get me, give me time to, uh, to get her up to the dentist. Um... So, I'm going to get flying from here, and I will catch you all again post-lockdown, uh, post hopefully in December, if uh, I'm a bit of a Boris fan, but uh, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> all these lockdowns and everything, I'm not quite sure we're doing the right thing for that, but maybe we are, who knows. Anyway, I'm going to get cracking and uh, I will see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, like, subscribe, share, the usual stuff. Anyway, do apologise. It's such a short trip, but maybe it was the only one we're going to get in November. So better short, <laughs> better a short one than, <laughs> better a short one than, than none at all, as they say. All right, catch you again soon. Bye-bye. Okay, I just had this in here for you, just as an... Uh a side piece of information if it focuses starting at 11 o'clock at night and then going through hourly the wind speed dropped down to about four miles per hour this is miles per hour on here down to three two point nine six o'clock this morning three point six so it was a very calm night okay with well the temperature at uh nine o'clock last night 
was 13 degrees, which obviously is not um, correct. It clearly wasn't that warm last night, but it stands recording properly at 10 o'clock. I turned it on earlier, so I'm not quite sure.